Hey family, happy Tuesday. I'm so excited that you're here and I'm so excited to share this video journal with you. I've had the most beautiful rest day today. It's been so amazing. I feel so unbelievably nourished and relaxed. <laughs> And like, I actually can't tell you how good it feels to feel like this. <sighs> After so many months of feeling anxious of so many, after so many years of feeling like I've had to chase, I'm going to talk about all of this in the video, but right now I just, yeah, I just feel called to share that I feel really fucking relaxed right now and it's beautiful and in this space anything is possible and I love that I fucking love that the thunders rumbling away in the distance I can hear it now I can see the storm clouds rolling in from outside my window and I am turning 28 in less than two weeks so this is gonna be a kind of I guess like video log the last couple of years the last stage and season of my journey and how I'm feeling coming into this next chapter of life awakening everything in between um, I usually get really anxious before my birthday and I notice that all of my like or I experience a kind of existential anxiety sometimes leading up to my birthday and it sucks and I traced it back and it came up in a, a reading I did with a girlfriend um, that when I was about to turn 10 I think it was my mom said something to me about oh you're gonna be such a big girl you, you're growing up so fast and when I was little I equated growing up with being like my parents <laughs> I didn't want to be like my parents at all hands up if you can relate and so I kind of checked out and tapped out and it created this anxiety that I would feel every year around my birthday about getting older and growing up and I got to clear that and I feel really actually feel really neutral about it now which is really cool there's no when I think about my birthday there's no real dread fear anxiety there's no real excitement there's actually no real feeling at the moment which is kind of nice. <laughs> Neutralize the situation. Yeah. I've got a couple of stories to share in this video. And really, I just wanted to come on and chat to you guys and see how everyone is, how everyone's tracking. Hey, Abby. Hey, beautiful. And share a little bit about my book writing journey as well. So we'll be talking about book writing, creativity. I'm going to share some experiences that I had, have been having while I've been writing my book. And then just, yeah, the lead up to 28 and how that looks and feels for me. Um, book writing's been intense. <laughs> it's been really fucking intense. It's been really... The process of writing this book has shown me so much and what it brought up for me especially the last week intensive was all the places that I'm yet to fully surrender to unconditionally loving myself and all of these places that I still held a lot of judgment and so was still creating a lot of suffering for myself things around men things around money things around living situations things around family and it was almost like everything just kind of was like oh here Here's where you're hustling outside your worthy, like hustling for worthiness. Here's where you're like still not like surrendering that to God or here are kind of like, it was just a mind fuck. Like it was a real mind fuck. Um, and what it brought me back to, and this is a story that I'm really excited to share, was on the third night <laughs> was unconditional love. And it's the only thing, as much as I try and resist it, as much as I like think that I can, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I can make it bigger or that it needs to be bigger and bolder, but it's like what 
could be bigger than unconditional love like really honestly what could be bigger and bolder and more incredible and life-changing than unconditional love seriously in whatever form that takes and so I was really fucking struggling for the first three days of writing my book and it felt like pulling teeth it felt like I was white knuckling my vision and my goals and you guys know I'm all about like ease and grace and creative flow and it felt like I was just like forcing this thing that just didn't want to come and I realized that as I was writing it was kind of like <laughs> I realized all the places that I still hadn't healed from a lot of the stuff that had happened so for those of you that don't know my story we're talking about um, domestic violence trauma we're talking about like emotional abuse we're talking about sex addiction we're talking about mental illness like depression anxiety bipolar um, yeah love and sex addiction as well I can include that in mental illness and what I experienced in those first three days of book writing were all of the places where I was still judging my experience all of the places and the magnitude with which I was still resisting what happened to me and the incredible like desire that I had to bend my story in a way that would like make sense to the narrative that I had in my head of how it should be and it's really funny like I believe that all things happen for a reason and I believe that God has a plan that's greater than all of us and I also believe in the power of like creativity to help us rewrite the stories of our experiences and <laughs> what like the first three days was for me was me coming up against my own victimhood and me coming up against all of the pieces of myself that were like well why did that happen like that's shit <laughs> and rather than like surrendering to the blessing and the lesson and the strength and seeing my strength um and seeing all of the beautiful gifts that those experiences produced i was still very much in that victim mentality of like fuck this was such a shit experience and it was painful to go back and relive those experiences and retell those stories or even just read through what I'd already written in this victim mindset of like that shouldn't have happened to me or I don't know how I actually like I'm yet to bear, bear the fruit or experience the fruit of this like these bullshit experiences was really fucking painful because it was like my mind was trying to create meaning <laughs> where there was none and my soul was kind of to be honest I felt really disconnected from my soul and then on the third night of course <laughs> on the third night I was lying in bed and the, this whole time I was like okay just keep showing up just keep showing up every call we had it's like a whole week book intensive so we had all these calls and every time I was like just keep showing up it's okay it's okay it's gonna be okay like we're just we're gonna get through this like we've gotten through everything that we've ever gotten through before this we've gotten through we'll get through this as well just keep showing up keep showing up keep showing up and so I would get on every call I would voice note my mentors bawling my eyes out being like I don't know why this is so hard and it's like I'm trying to explain this like the visceral sensations in my body and anyway on the third night I was like so spent like just energetically so fucking drained and I got to this point where I was lying in bed with my laptop and I was like, holy fuck, I can't do this. Like, I actually can't do this. I'm giving up. Like, I'm actually giving up. Like, I'm not writing a book. I just can't. And it was like every single, the theme for me for the week was like, where is my masculine? Where is my masculine? Where is my masculine? Where's the piece of me that can just persist regardless? Or like, where is my like, <laughs> yeah, where is the piece of me that can actually pick myself off the fucking floor when I need to? and carry on and of course this is the journey of the book right it's like when we're on our knees when we're on the fucking floor when we're heartbroken in our lives how can we get the strength to carry on to pick ourselves up and carry on and when I say carry on I don't mean in numbness I don't mean numbing out in addiction I don't mean seeking I don't mean carrying on with the behaviors that we've been carrying on with but how do we find and get the strength to actually say okay I'm going to continue with this path of love I'm going to change what needs to be changed and I'm going to carry on believing the best about life 
and about myself with positivity, optimism, and a renewed sense of faith, hope, and love. <laughs> even though everything feels like it's falling apart. Even though everything feels like shit. And I'm lying in bed and I said to my mentor, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this because I don't know where my masculine is. I victim story saying, who's going to come rescue me, right? I can't do this. I don't know who's going to come rescue me. And I was lying down and I'd push my laptop away. I was like, wanted to vomit every time I looked at the screen. And I was just like pushing my laptop away. I'm like, I just can't fucking do this. And I'm lying there in the fetal position. And I just, yeah, I sent her that message. I was like, I don't know how I, I'm going to do this. And she voice noted me back. And she was like, well, Jay, now would be a really good time to find your power and find your strength and do it anyway. And... This whole wave, I think it was like my ego dying or some part of me dying, but this whole wave of me was like, oh, and then something else was there. And I feel like that something else is the presence of God. And I feel like that something else, it's not always there. Sometimes it's just the wave of like dread and like death and anxiety. But this time, like something else was there. And that something else was this spark of like heavenly fire that was like, oh, actually, I can do this. And oh, actually, I'm the one I've been waiting for. And I'm the one that gets to rescue myself in this moment by loving myself unconditionally and standing up and delivering the truth of who I really am. And I can feel it now. There's so much heat like around the back of my heart right now because that was like what happened in the moment is that I felt this incredible people always talk about how their heart cracks open and it didn't feel like that. It felt like, I don't know what it felt like, but all of a sudden I was standing like this and I was at my computer and I was like, I grabbed my computer, I grabbed my laptop and <laughs> my whole chest was like, Vroom, and I was just standing there like this and I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> and I was like, Oh shit. Like love is the answer. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Of course. <laughs> And it's so funny, like how, yeah, <laughs> so I grabbed my laptop and I stood up and I went to the, like the bench in the kitchen and I just propped my laptop up and my heart was just like this. And I opened a brand new fucking word document. I had like 60,000 words already done in this book and I opened up a fucking brand new word document. I was like, if I have to start again, I don't care. I'm just doing it. And I just started typing all this stuff and it was like, love is this, love is this, love is this, love is this. And it was like, love is the answer to all things. Love doesn't care what you've done. Love is the solution to all of our problems. Like love is the, like, it was just this beautiful divine transmissions of all these things that love actually is. And all my life, what had kept me out of the presence of love were these ideas that I had and these preconceived misconceptions or beliefs about who and what love was and who and what God is. And in this beautiful moment, it was like God is reminding me that, hey, remember? Remember the truth of who I am? Remember? And all of these beautiful things just started coming out of me and I actually have a bunch of them written down on a list somewhere. They're like, they now form, of course, they form like the key like the key cornerstones in my book, at least I think they do. They're definitely a common thread throughout the book of what who and what love is. But it's like, love never asks you to prove yourself. Love is here always. Um, I am the source of my own love in my life. And these just these beautiful truths about love that kept coming through me. And it was just a really cool experience. Because as I was writing, it was like this supernatural energy. And it wasn't like literally 30 seconds before I had been, or like I'd been experiencing, curled up in the fetal position. I cannot do this anymore. I can't go on. I'm not going to do this. My whole life and world and everything crumbling around me. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, right. Okay. So love is there too. <laughs> and it was just this beautiful 
I just divine revelation of grace. Like that's the only words, they're the only words that I feel like can do it justice. This divine revelation of grace that's like, oh hey, actually I fucking can. So when I was telling myself I couldn't, when a part of me was like running the story, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, this is a mess, everything's falling apart. Love was there, love is here. And it was like, oh actually, I can. <laughs> and yeah, so I just started fucking writing and it was great. And that like, I was there for probably like three and a half hours. This is like late at night that I was having, I had the meltdown and then this is like even later into the night and I just stayed in the flow of it. And it was just like this, <sighs> it was just this beautiful, perfectly timed reminder <laughs> that I didn't have to do it alone and that I could receive and call upon love when I needed to. And I don't know if it was like, <laughs> I don't know why I waited so long to receive that love again into my life. And I don't know why I thought I would enter the creative process without it, but I did. And it sucked <laughs> until love came to the show, until love came to the party. <laughs> and then it was fun. And it still sucked, and it sucked a lot less <laughs> because love was there. And every time, and this is like my whole thing now, and it's just like this continual reminder in my life that I just keep get, like, getting reminded of, I guess, by life and love, is that I just get to keep coming back to the presence of love. And really like discovering for myself the truth of who and what love is rather than listening to what the world tells me it is or even like the bible or even like other teachers and people it's like having that personal revelation for myself of who and what love is um yeah so it was fun and the rest of the time i literally just wrote from like it was just like my heart space of like this beautiful like and I was like, oh, of course, like this fits here, this fits here, this fits here. And then all the structure was dropping in for the book. And that was my thing. It's like, I can't find the structure in my book. It's just everywhere. And I was like, oh, cool. Divine love is the structure. And divine love is all the structure that I need. And so, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. And there's still been moments since where it's like, oh shit, this is really big. This is really hard. This feels really, this feels really big. This feels really hard. This feels really heavy. And there's been moments where I'm like, holy fuck, this feels like heaven itself is channeling through me right now. Not necessarily in what I'm writing, but in what I'm experiencing. Like I've had moments of like divine revelation where I'm just like, I feel like I'm high and it's like, yeah, love is just like right fucking like in me, like full on in me, like bursting forth into the world. Like that, that's the moments like that are really cool. Like I feel what I imagine some people experience when they're on plant medicine. Like I'm just so high and euphoric and I'm just laughing. Like I'm just laughing at absolutely nothing and I'm laughing and the synchronicities are like coming thick and fast and there's just this beautiful clarity of oneness and like, oh shit, like this is all there is. Like it's just, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> It's so cool. And I'm like, even if, yeah, like just these experiences, because I've had moments, yeah, just these experiences, like that's just what I keep coming back to. These experiences are just really cool. Um, but yeah, can I love myself through the fear? Can I love myself through the doubt? Can I love myself through all the, like in all of the places and in all the areas of my life where I feel like I'm fucking up? Can I love myself there too? And this morning when I woke up, because I've been waking up some mornings, like experiencing a little bit of anxiety and I've had, um, <sighs> had this thing come up recently where it's kind of like a compulsion and I've been struggling to discern whether it's like a compulsion or a desire. And it's this like piece or this part of me or this voice that's like, tells me that it wants to go hitchhiking and it wants to like go on this massive adventure. And it feels a lot like a call to adventure that I've experienced in the past. And it also feels like really quote unquote, it brings up a lot of fear in me when I think about actually doing it. And so rather than having this piece of me, cause I've had pieces of me like this before, not quite like this, but similar, 
where it's like you have to do this thing and I don't always necessarily like run head first into the adventure and be like fuck yeah this is what I'm gonna do especially this one like I felt a lot of resistance and a lot of um just like fear arise in my body and in my nervous system if I actually think about doing it I've used it instead as or as well as I've used it instead to create this like new and deeper connection and experience of myself so when I think about this piece of myself and what it desires to go hitchhiking I use that to inform me of a place in my or the places in myself that are yet to experience love because as far as I know these pieces that come up are just like asking for our attention I initially had the reaction of like oh my god it's the devil like I'm being swayed from my path and then I remembered that I am both <laughs> and then I remembered that I am love and I am God and that I don't need to fear quote unquote the devil and so I can actually dance with the devil and I can dance with the quote unquote devil and as soon as I start dancing with these pieces of myself I realize that they're actually not pure evil they're actually just pieces of myself that get to receive my unconditional love and so as I started dancing with it it's kind of started I I'm putting it over here because this is where it feels like it's coming from but it's starting to inform me about places and areas in my life where I can increase my levels of fulfillment. So, for example, this is symbolic to me of like where I long for and really crave and where I'm currently, where I was currently lacking adventure in my life. And so it's like, how can I bring, because what hitchhiking like brings me at its in its purest form is like facing a lot of my fears, which is really cool, but also like a sense of like anything is possible because I never know where I'm going to end up. I never know where I'm going to go. I don't know who's going to pick me up off the side of the road. I don't even know if anyone will. And I don't know who I'm going to meet as well. That's always really exciting to me. It's like new people, new connections, new faces. And so it's like I'm using this compulsion or this whatever you want to call it, this piece of myself. I'm yet to figure it out, but it's like I'm figuring it out as I as I speak about it. But it's like I'm using this to inform my life experience to help me like lead me down a path of greater fulfillment and so I'm creating more space for pleasure I'm creating more space for adventure I'm creating more space for freedom and uncertainty and spontaneity I'm creating more space for travel I've realized lately that like my Gemini ascendant love travel fucking love travel and it's really funny because I really resisted travel for a really long time um and it's like it's a really big part of what actually makes me so happy is traveling to different places and seeing lots of different people. Um, and I'm also acknowledging that like this could all be one really big way of me making meaning out of something to avoid doing the next best thing for my soul. Do you know what I mean? Like, as I'm saying that, I'm like, I'm feeling there's like a no in my body and it could just be the next call to adventure that I get to walk straight into and through. You know what I mean? Like I could go on a massive hitchhiking adventure if I really wanted to. Um, it's like the piece here is like I'm not judging and resisting and pushing away these pieces of myself that seem really fucking quote unquote wild and crazy. I really don't believe that like the places within us that are like wild, untamable and seemingly crazy to the outside world are a mistake or an accident or like, uh, like are a part or outside of God. Or God's will I really believe that they are created for a purpose and a reason and even if that reason is just to so that we can practice receiving them with unconditional love then that's like fucking awesome because that's a great thing to practice but like whatever it is like whether it's a compulsion or an addiction or a mental illness like it's really understanding that I've really come to understand or like decide I guess for myself that these places aren't and these things aren't really things to be like resisted or hated or even feared like or, or scared of it's just like what is this teaching me about myself what is this informing how is this informing my life experience how can I learn from this I think about and I'm speaking about this in a conference on Friday I'm gonna put the link somewhere it's called enlighten you guys are gonna fucking love it but how can I actually like my depression or the depression that I experienced was such a powerful tool I guess for me to look at all the places where I was outsourcing my approval and validation where I was still relying or like 
really like literally outsourcing to anywhere other than the present moment my joy my happiness my peace my fulfillment because i was constantly chasing these like external goals and coming up against like brick walls and then getting really de like depressed and feeling really depressed as fuck and it's like okay well where are you relying on those doors opening for your sense of freedom security validation approval where are you relying on those instead of relying on this and my anxiety the anxiety that i experienced it's really interesting i'm noticing like I think it's part of reclaiming the story is like when I say my anxiety, there's a part of me that's not attached to it anymore, but there's a part of me that's really fucking grateful for it. And so I think of it as kind of like a pet, like I'm not attached to my suffering and I'm not addicted to it anymore. So I don't recreate that experience for myself. And I acknowledge that at a time in my life, it was really instrumental in my growth. So it's like, yeah, the my is coming from a place of like, oh, but it's like, it taught me so much. So I'm really grateful for it. And I understand that like language is so fucking powerful and I don't want to recreate that. Like I'm creating new experiences for myself. The anxiety that I experienced was again, showing me where I was like <laughs> trying to control everything in my life and <sighs> being ruled by the conditioning that I've been programmed with versus like what my soul actually desires for me yeah and I'm still journeying that massively like who am I away from my conditioning and who like what are my actual desires versus like what the world has conditioned me to believe and want and like really truly want and it's like there is this place in me that's often felt really like really desired worldly success and i was writing it down last night and i was like why it's really just asking myself like why i'm really purifying making sure my desires are just like totally purified and what i mean by that is just like am i in them like am i in these desires am i as love in these desires and or are they coming from this place of like living up to a worldly expectation because it's like I desire a really fucking massive house. I've got it on my vision board. It's huge and houses all over the world. And I wrote it down last night. And it was like, why? Well, I want space to dance. And it's like, cool. Are you utilizing the space you already have to dance? Right? Like the whole world is our dance floor, right? Am I dancing all over the world? Yeah, I kind of am actually. <laughs> it feels really cool. I danced on the beach the other day. It was beautiful. Um, but then why else do I desire a really big house? Um, what else do I write down? <laughs> this is a huge one for me. Um, I desired the to be at tables, seated at tables with other amazing world leaders. When I looked at this one, it was really interesting because <laughs> there was some like <laughs> there was some stuff in it. And what I mean by that is when I narrow when I kind of boiled it down, I was like, why do I want that? Why do I want that? Why do I want that? It was like, oh, cool. Okay. So they can tell you that you're beautiful. They can tell you that you're special. When I pictured these scenarios, what I was picturing about them that I was like attached to was that in these scenarios, the leaders that I'm imagining, I was imagining myself being around were telling me how beautiful I am, how amazing I am, how in integrity I am, how devoted to the light I am. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm basically like how special my gifts are, right? And that was the experience I'm actually craving. So it's really cool to actually kind of look at, yeah, why do I actually seek this experience? Because then as soon as I looked at that, I was like, oh, cool. I can create that experience for myself right now. And actually, like if I even, if I had that experience, like I'm, what I'm realizing is that no amount of those people telling me that I'm beautiful, special, amazing would actually feel this need inside me because it felt like it was coming from this. I was just looking for them to be like my surrogate parents. <laughs> and as like, I was looking at them to be like my replacement mom and dad to be like, Oh, you're enough. You're special. You're incredible. Your gifts are valuable and worthy and loved. And like, you're so seen and known and understood. And it's like, okay, cool. So I don't know that that's like, I, I love and I fully acknowledge that I want to be seen and known and understood, but I also know that it's not the source of my fulfillment. Like other people are not the source of my fulfillment. I am the source of my fulfillment. And 
no amount of other people, like, even if I had that experience, <sighs> even if I had the experience of these incredible leaders who I look up to so much telling me that they see in me these incredible gifts, well, what would that, like, give me permission to be able to do? And then why can't I just go and fucking do it now? Do you know what I mean? So I use that rather than waiting for that experience to unlock the next step in my journey. I just created that experience internally and it was like, oh, okay, cool. So they've already said that to me because I've said that to myself. And now once, because I know that, that I'm special and amazing and beautiful and powerful and my light is so needed in the world and I'm of incredible integrity because I've anointed myself with that instead of waiting for these like leaders because it's just pedestaling them, right? Like, I'm just looking to them to somehow bestow this, like, worldly, like, thing or, like, this otherworldly thing on me. It'd just be, like, going to a priest or someone and expecting them to ordain you. It's like, well, just, like, ordain yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we have the same power that they have, so why not just ordain ourselves? It just saves a lot of effort. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, cool. So I ordain myself by acknowledging that I'm special, valuable, worthy. And I now I know that all those things, what do I want to do? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can actually like take better care of myself. I can rest. I can write, I can actually write my book and be really confident and proud of it. I can get on live and do videos like this and fully stand in my anointing as um, a creator and as like a vessel of light and love in this world. <laughs> this is one of the things that I wanted to do and that I was like waiting for some like divine otherworldly person to come and tell me, give me permission to do, right? <sighs> and there's one more thing. It was like I wanted to have $3 million in my bank account because, hold on, I'm getting at my notebook. Okay. I can't find it, but I'm just going to trust that I can remember it. I want to have three million dollars in my bank account why so then other people will know that I'm successful why why do you care so that then they'll keep coming to me okay great so what so then that I'll have oh that was my door so I have a continual source of income okay cool why do I need a continual source of income so I can keep doing the things that I so I can keep buying the things that I want okay what do you want that you don't already have Like, <laughs> okay, cool. What do I want that I don't already have? There's literally nothing in this moment. And so it's not to say that I don't genuinely desire that $3 million, but when I kind of come back to this pure place of the present moment and go like, actually, I don't need anything in this moment and there's nothing that I don't have in this moment that I want because everything exists inside of this moment, right? Everything fucking exists inside of this moment. I'm a successful, I can feel as successful now as I'm ever, ever going to feel right now, right here. And if I'm, if I'm attaching myself to the point where it's causing me anxiety or grief or pain to this idea of like worldly success, then where is the shadow elements? Where are the shadow elements in that that are making me feel like I need to hustle, that are making me feel like I need to be in pain, that are making me feel like I need to, or that are causing me the experience of feeling like, feeling anxiety, feeling pain, feeling whatever right so it's really getting clear on where if like if it feels beautiful and if it feels blissful and it feels easy awesome like perfect and if it's starting to feel like oh my god I don't have it and I really want it and oh, it's starting to feel like oh my god I'll do anything to get it and like oh my god like I'm sacrificing my health or my rest or my sleep or like my sanity or my peace if it feels like that, then it's like, okay, cool. So where, how can I purify this desire that I have? And 
is it still a desire that I have? Because it's like, okay, cool. I believe that there's a piece of me, well, I should say I've been told that there's a piece of me in my human design that's like longs to be quote unquote successful and like longs for worldly success. And a part of that is like experiencing recognition from others for the gifts that I bring to the world. And I think it's actually a really beautiful thing to long to be recognized and seen for who we really are. It's like a, a craving, especially of the, like the unique human spirit and the feminine spirit, especially. And if we're sacrificing our peace, our self-worth, our integrity, our joy, our freedom in any moment to receive that, it's like, okay, well, is it really worth it? Like, what's the cost? And can it be easy? Can it be, can I stay in my essence, my rest, my joy, my peace, my freedom, my bliss, my sovereignty, and still experience all of those things as like a, as a result of this, rather than all of this. This is like, here is who I am. This is what I have to bring to the world. This is what I feel called to do in this moment. This is what feels good for me. This feels like a lot of like, holy fuck, I have to be successful. Holy fuck, I have to make more money. Holy fuck, I have to do this. And it's like continually power here, power here. <laughs> I just, the question I'm just continually asking myself is like, how can it be even more fun? I'm asking myself a lot of questions lately, actually. And I'm just like allowing the answers to come to me in different forms. Whether it's like a mentor or a post that I read or a lesson that I experience, whatever it is. But it's like a movie that I watch, a podcast that I listen to. Even like not being attached to experiencing the answers right away, but just asking really, really cool questions of the universe and then just letting them go. And then continually just loving ourselves in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through. Like if that's my only job, I literally woke up this morning and I just had my hands on my heart and I was just sending my, in my head and I was just sending myself love. I was like, I just love myself. I love myself. I love, love, love. Like it was just all flooding my whole being with unconditional love. <sighs> Can I love even the pieces of me that are scared shitless? Can I love even the pieces of me that are like resistant to love? <laughs> Right? Can I just love them all? Can I love even the pieces of me that are so unbelievably imperfect and feel like they're like, they're fucking up right now? Can I love those pieces too? Yeah. And the truth is that they're worthy of it. Like they're so fucking worthy of that. All of you is so worthy of love. And... It's so funny, like when I experience this and when I actually feel into it. And this morning I did a breath work and afterwards it was just like, just rest, baby girl, just rest. Because like when I rest and my nervous system's at rest, it's like my whole being can kind of stretch out. And I feel like my energetics, like I feel my energy like moving into the earth and like sowing these beautiful seeds and planting, like putting down roots all over the, all over the planet. And... There used to be, and there used to be this piece of me that was so addicted to adrenaline and so addicted to, it was almost like I relied on my anxiety for, mo or I relied on anxiety for motivation. So I would create experiences where I would feel anxious in order to motivate myself to do what I thought I wanted to do. And a lot of it is just our nervous system creating cycles and feedback loops. So until we choose that it doesn't happen like that for us anymore, then our bodies kind of just go through the same cycles over and over again of like, I'm feeling like this, now I'm feeling like this, now I'm feeling like this, now I'm feeling like this. And it's not until we bring our conscious awareness to it of like, actually, 
how long can I stay in homeostasis? How much joy can I actually allow myself to feel? How completely can I be in rest and digest and relaxation? And how can I trust that even in this state, I might not be motivated in the same way that I was to hustle, to get shit done, to do things in the way that I've always done them. How can I trust that instead something else, maybe something the same, maybe something really different, maybe something completely foreign, something else will emerge out of that. <sighs> this is what's emerging for me out of my rest. I felt like this morning, I felt like I just want to embody my set the intention, kind of not really. I didn't even really set an intention going into breath work this morning. I'd just been feeling really called cool to do more breath work. And I felt like I was just like opening like the Lotus and I was like, cool, I want to embody the Lotus. And I just want to embody that in my whole life. Just embody that Lotus and that flower, like growing out of like whatever shit and just turning it into beauty. And I'm like, whoa. And I just choose not to be, I choose to be motivated by, by deep desire and by longing. I choose just to be in the flow with love. Like it doesn't even really require any motivation, right? Like I think I used to wait for like my anxiety to kick in and be like, but hold on a minute, you're not doing enough. Um, and you said that you wanted to do X, Y, and Z by the time you were 30, so you better get cracking. And it's like, I was almost just allowing my inner critic to just keep like pushing me. And that's taken various forms. Like I've had I've experienced what I call my inner slave driver, like cracking the whip in my head. And I said it again, I had an inner, like my inner slave driver. I had the experience of an inner slave driver, which is like, boom, come on. <laughs> and I choose now to really just create experiences where I feel calm and peaceful and And just allow, like allow what's there, allow what's naturally there to emerge out of that or to emerge. <sighs> and there's this piece of me that is like, and what about worldly success? And what about because it's non-judgment, right? Like we don't want to judge these places in ourselves that really do want to experience these amazing things, these big, beautiful homes, these million dollar bank accounts and paydays, these beautiful luxuries of life, these holidays, these experiences. That was another one. I wanted experiences because I wanted connection. Yeah. I used to see this a lot in my life. Like I would crave I would crave like dangerous experiences or I would continue to create dangerous experiences for myself so that I could have stories to tell people that would, I thought would make them like me more because I wanted connection. Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool. I'm not demonizing that part of me. I'm not saying that I was like a possessed human that was just like hell bent on self-destruction. I'm not a bad, no one's a bad human. It was just that there was a piece of me that was craving connection and that was the way that I thought to get it. That was the, the, honestly, that was the path that I thought that it would, like, that's what I, th what I thought it would take for me to get it. And so that's what I did. Cause like, we'll do anything for what we want, right? And this is the piece. It's like, we actually already are the warrior that will do anything to get what we want. It's just a matter of like, actually 
really purifying and clearing all the stuff around what it is that we want and what it is that we're actually doing to to get it because sometimes the path that we take is like fraught with um isn't serving us um or it only serves us for a period and it's like there's an easier way and yeah so yeah connection yeah and right now, like, I feel really connected to myself because I'm allowing myself to go into all these, like, crevices and parts and I'm allowing all these pieces of me to have voices. And there's nothing I don't feel right now in my field that feels like it's fighting for airtime <laughs> or that it's being rejected or abandoned or ignored. And... how I come home and how I experience wholeness in myself is literally just like, there's like a piece inside of me and I imagine it as like an, a child or whatever. And it's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's doing whatever it needs to do. It's creating whatever behavior it needs to create. But right now it's just like a little human. It's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. And so I just go inward and I find it. And right now it's like here, you can't see, but it's like on my right hip or like in my right abdomen. And I just pick it out and I pick it up and I say, Hey, and I just bring it and I hold it close to my heart and in my chest and I like bring my sovereign queen or whoever it is and I just bring her in and I just hold that piece of myself close and I just say I feel you <laughs> I see you, I feel you, I love you and it might take some time that piece of us might like squirm and scream and want to run away it might like grow devil horns and try and like fucking eat your face um, it doesn't matter. This is like the thing. It's like, how can, can we embody the presence of unconditional love in the face of even like the most resistant pieces of ourselves? And then in the world, can we embody the presence of unconditional love even in front of or even in like the presence of the most resistant people or humans or whatever? Um, and it's like, it's not even a thing because if you love all the pieces of yourself, then often you find that the people that have come into your sphere are actually really easy to love as well. Yeah, that's been my experience. Yeah. And just continually bringing it back to the present moment. Like, holy fuck. Like, this moment, this moment, this moment. Sometimes if I'm struggling to stay in the present, I will imagine, like, the awareness around me as, like, my God self looking in on me right now. And it's all of a sudden, because I'm not me, I become the awareness, then I become God and I remember my God self and it's like I can't be anywhere else in that moment other than exactly where I am because I'm embodying my God self, the God self. And so it's like if you're struggling to get in the present right now or in any moments where it feels really tricky, imagine that you are your aura and you're looking back at yourself in this moment. And it's like, <laughs> it just it makes me giddy even when I do it now. I'm just like, <laughs> like, of course. It's so beautiful and it's like I just keep coming back to that time and time and time again. It's like, oh cool, I'm still in the presence of love. Oh, I'm still in the presence of love. Oh, I'm still, yeah, cool. And now, yep, now too. Oh, I'm crying, cool. Still in the presence of love. Oh, I'm like on the kitchen floor, cool. Still in the presence of love. Oh, I'm fighting with my partner, presence of love. Awesome, still here, still here, still here. Never leaves, still here. And I don't think we really necessarily have to do anything with that. Like I used to get so caught up in this idea of like, okay, what does love want me to do now, do now, do now, do now? And it's like, actually, can I just be in the presence of love? Like, can I just be here? And can I just feel how that feels? And then if I intuitively feel guided, we'll just talk about that later. But like, can I just be in the presence of love? Can I? <laughs> yeah. I think I can. I know I can, because I am. <laughs> I am in the presence of love. I am the presence of love, right? And it's this journey from like desperately seeking love outside ourselves and doing like all of this crazy shit and these crazy things to like that we think we need to do in order to get it and actually like, oh, becoming love, seeking love, becoming love. Um, and yeah, we do that by loving all the pieces of ourselves and yeah, remembering that we are the presence of love, love. Love. Okay, I'll stop. Um, yeah. I love singing. I love it so much. I really do. 
<sighs> and there's still pieces of me that feel just like so far outside the realm of what I can even imagine right now that it's just like holy shit this is crazy and sometimes I really love playing with those pieces as well like the realms of like whoa infinite possibility and like whoa this feels so like whoa this feels just whoa <laughs> yeah I love playing with those pieces too yeah cool so yeah I'm gonna be 28 <laughs> in I feel like I was 13 days yesterday as well but 12 days 13 days and I feel like like fucking finally a part of me is like finally I in the past couple of years especially I've gotten to this point right before my birthday where I've almost like integrated ahead of time the age that I'm turning and it's like a couple of weeks before it kind of lands I'm like oh yeah cool and I can feel her and I can feel it and it's really cool um and it's like it's funny the process that I sometimes go through I'm like oh my god I don't feel ready I'm not ready and then it happens and you're like oh actually I'm ready and I'm here because it's happening and it's I'm embodying it um and this year I feel like it's not this thing of like oh my gosh have I ticked off all the things I wanted to do like even am, am I embodying all the things I wanted to embody by the time I'm 28 it's like actually I have all the time in the world and that's a whole nother talk we can do a whole nother talk on that but like I don't know like can I just like keep even if things like even if things didn't change even if I just like did exactly what I'm doing now for a whole nother year mm. yeah I don't know that I would like that <laughs> But it's like, even if I can just like stay in the presence of love, right? Like I have unconditional love and I have the ability to love myself unconditionally. So like, what else do I need? And I know that like, whatever this year, I don't want to say like, whatever I feel called to create this year and whatever experiences I want to have this year, I trust that like, I'm been prepared for them I really have I've been prepared for them and I've been being prepared for them my whole life like literally my whole life leading up to this point has prepared me for what I'm about to step into this year and in the next like year of my life and it just keeps happening like that right we're just constantly consistently being prepared for the next season and I can live like that and I can keep like reminding myself of that and I get to remind myself that oh cool also, this is the only season that matters right now. This is the only season. This is the only season. Like this right here, what we're doing right now is the only season that matters. Like this is where I'm going to bring all my energy, focus and attention because this is the only thing that matters right now. Because this is the only thing that exists right now. And so I can be thinking and planning and dreaming and visioning for the future and that's beautiful and cool and it has a place. And like, am I doing it to avoid something I don't want to feel? Am I doing it to kind of fulfill this need for like external validation? Am I doing it because I can't actually like sit with myself and be with myself in this present moment? Am I doing it because I want to run away from like the past that I've experienced and I'm like so set on like I will never create that experience that I have for myself again. So I'm like got to like move towards this experience at all times. Can I just like be okay with what is? Ugh. Yeah, can I just be okay with what is? <sighs> I had a yoni massage last week and I feel like it's just cleared out so much shit from my body. Like so much residual trauma and debris like bleh, it's just gone and it feels so good like i just yeah i didn't even know i could access states of like relaxation for this long like this fuck it feels so juicy it feels so juicy it's just divine like it's so beautiful and divine and i get to stay in this like I get to stay in this flow how cool is that i get to stay in this flow however for however long i want i can stay in this flow for the rest of my life if i want to It's 
still a choice, right? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Yoni mapping. Loving ourselves in the fear. Facing, creating space to dance, no, creating space to relax and be with us, all of ourselves. Creating the space to rest. Dancing with our shadows. Purifying our intentions, our desires. Mm. Loving ourselves unconditionally. Like there's one more thing that I wanted to speak about. What else did I say at the beginning? I really am like this idea of worldly success keeps coming up or these thoughts around worldly success. You guys hear the rain? Fuck, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, I actually feel like I really want to end it there. Yeah, it feels really good. <sighs> Let's all take three breaths together. <sighs> Love you, family.